um, you'll be very cautious not to allow that memory to take, take the place of a fact that does or doesn't come from the courtroom? Yes, sir. Can you do that? I um, And again, I, I'm not asking, you know, do you promise me to do this? But the other concern is this. You're sitting with your fellow jurors, the case is over, um, and now you're what we call deliberating. You're listening, you're trying to decide what to do. If memories have come up during the trial that didn't come into the courtroom, right? Do you think it would be appropriate then to talk to the other jury members about that or not? Why not? Because it will only go by what we hear. Okay. Now that we've spent a few minutes talking about it, is there anything else that you believe that you have a memory of, an insight on, or something that you know about the case that we should talk about now rather than you remembering it or talking about it with your fellow jurors? Even though you've been exposed through the media to lots of things yes. about the case, you feel confident and comfortable with the idea that should you sit on the jury, your decision would be based on the evidence that comes <coughs> in the courtroom. Yes. And if there might be other things you've heard, whether true or not, that would be relatively easy for you to sort out <coughs> and, and make your decision just on what you hear right here. Absolutely. Okay. As Mr. Delarionda asked, if you had to choose or if you were put in a position where <clears throat> you were considering what was in the courtroom as opposed to what you may have heard somewhere else, would it be difficult for you to limit your consideration as to the facts of the case and how the law would apply to those facts to only what you've heard in the courtroom? I think I could make that separation. The question really is, if in fact you do have some memories, and we tell you to bring your common sense with you, so we're not going to ask you to leave that outside, but we are going to ask you to leave outside memories that are case specific. Right. Um, and if that comes up while you're deliberating, so the case is over, you've heard all the evidence you're supposed to hear, you've listened to the judge, and you're now back with the other jurors talking about the case. And, doing what you're supposed to do, which is decide. Um, if something comes up, you remember something that you haven't heard about in the courtroom, how would you handle that? If I didn't hear it in the courtroom, we can't consider it because it wasn't presented. So as a jury, you're supposed to consider everything that was presented in the case, so it would be irrelevant, or at least in my mind it would be. Okay. And how about if another juror? remember something in the courtroom and chats with you about it while deliberating. Well, that, that would also be irrelevant. We'd have to let them know, okay, well, even though you may have heard that, it wasn't, it wasn't presented in the case. Probably have to go back and make sure it wasn't presented in the case, because sometimes um, it, you may, it may be like the, the backside of something that was, may, may have been presented, but if it, if it never came up, that it never came up, you can't consider it. Okay. Any other concerns about the issue that Mr. Delaronda ended with and I started with about making sure that you don't infect what you hear in the, in the trial with what you thought you heard outside? Right? You straightened it out. Did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> okay. Anything else that needs to be cleared up on that issue? You okay with it? If you're a juror, you're going to leave all that stuff outside, just listen here today or during the trial? Okay, great. So let's look at it this way. If the jury were presented with evidence that was different or 
otherwise what different than what you thought the evidence might be in the case overall. Would you be able to limit your consideration of the case to just the evidence that was presented basically within these four walls? Yes. The question would be like this, you know, here's the evidence, you're on the jury, here's the evidence that you don't go back and you say, you know what, I know that, but I remember an article, or I remember a newscast, or I remember something that was different or more or less, and um, I'd like to tell everybody about that. Do you understand that wouldn't be appropriate? Okay, so for you though, would you be able to and limit, limit for your consideration the evidence that's presented here if you were uh, on the jury? corollary to that is, of course, if you hear anything outside, whether you happen to look down and see a newspaper on the floor as a juror and see a headline, you have to convince yourself to ignore that. And if you saw a headline a month ago, you have to make sure that it doesn't creep back into your process. Can you commit to that as well? I could. Sometimes other jurors will do the same things that we're worried about, that you get picked, you're on the jury, you're now back to liberating, the case is over states put on their case, we've heard jury instructions from the court, and now it's your turn to decide on a verdict. And some other juror says, you know, I never heard about this fact. And I remember reading about it. I remember my aunt told me about it or whatever. How would you handle that juror uh, who tried to bring in something that wasn't talked about from the jury, from the witness box? I think you need to steer that person to remember that they need to pay attention to the information that was delivered in the setting of the courtroom and perhaps ask for transcripts if that's a possibility, sort of bring people back to what the information was that was delivered in the setting in which you need to make your decisions based on. You got the jury summons. Obviously, the jury summons didn't say Zimmerman case, but it did say you were going to be a juror, right? Exactly. Did, upon receiving that, did you go, oh, maybe I will be on a, a particular case? Did you do any research about not just the Zimmerman case, but other cases that were going on to see potentially what you might be a juror for? Not really, because I've been called three times, and pretty much i just come and say. H have you actually served as a juror three times? I, I got called back for a jury, but then I was disqualified because I worked for a chiropractor, and it was a hit and run type. Okay. All right. So, how do you handle that when you do seek to get news? I really don't. Okay. Let's I don't know how to deal with that. All it's right. His, his deal. Okay. I volunteered for a rescue groups, bird, mm -hmm. cat, and you wind up with. Animals. Your service on this jury um, could run several weeks for you to be selected. Yes, sir. You got that, I think, from the questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And there's a chance that you would be sequestered, meaning that you will not be spending time at the house, but rather with the rest of the jury. Mm -hmm. How would that affect your household duties with the animals and everything else that you do at your house? My husband always say, already said that he would do it all. Because I'm not involved in any of it. And Sanford is kind of away from Oviedo, Winter Springs. Have you discussed this case, or even generally, with your husband? <coughs> I have not. Not at all? No. Uh, uh, we well, did remember something. Remember something about the, the rally, or something about a conversation you had with a neighbor mm -hmm. that we didn't talk about here today, but now you're sitting on the jury. How would you handle any conflict between that memory uh, and the evidence that you hear in this courtroom? Well, the evidence that I hear in the courtroom, I would presume to be true. Let's say that another jury did the same thing while you were deliberating with that jury. You know, you know how the process works? Take evidence, you listen to the judge, you find out what the law is, and then you'll go back, and the jury will decide what happens. Yes, no, I'm sorry, decide their verdict. Right. Um, in that context, what if another juror 
talks to you and says, well, I heard about something else that I didn't hear in the courtroom. I remember I saw this on TV or read it on the radio, read it on the newspaper or heard it on the radio, and I think this happened, even though it never came from a witness here. How would you react to that? I would say it was media hype. I mean, you can't prove anything that you heard prior to this case. One of the instructions that you're going to be told by the judge is that you have to decide only on the facts that you hear, competent evidence in this courtroom. Yes, sir. And that while we won't ask you to leave the common sense at the door, we actually want you to use your common sense. We can't let you bring outside evidence or knowledge or information inside. So would you be able to advise another the juror it doesn't come from a witness stand, it doesn't get considered? Yes, sir. The judge is going to instruct you for you to be on the jury. Not only is there a chance that, there, that you might be sequestered, but either way, that you cannot discuss this case with anybody during the time of your service. Yes, sir. You're going to be able to do that? Yes, sir. Even if your husband says, you know, I, I think this about that. No, my husband <coughs> would be totally the opposite. He'd be, no, I can't talk okay. to you. So he's not going to be the problem then. Yeah, he even, he even told me last night, he said, do not watch the news. You're not allowed to watch the news. Okay. You're willing to be an advocate on the court's okay. behalf to make sure that you don't see anything you're not supposed to see? Yes, sir.